we much prefer to actually have communication than for somebody to be too fearful about saying the wrong thing. Hi, my name's Stuart Bean. I'm currently safety manager for the in-flight group of companies. I operate here mainly at Motawaka Airport. I used to own Skydive Able Tasman, which was uh, started at, uh, in 1991. I'm a skydive instructor, I'm a parachute drop pilot, and I am chairman of the board of the Parachuting Industry Association. All parachuting operations are different, and, different in terms of timing. Uh, because of the nature of the activity, we're really reliant on the weather like most aviation. So if we get a window of time where we've got bad weather, we may have to push bookings to another time, which may make another time busier. So if you're going to an aerodrome that has parachuting, they could be operating any time. It's not a nine to five business. Pilots who are entering an airfield that has a skydiving operation that are unfamiliar with that airfield really need to be careful to get information about what's going on at the airfield before they're coming in. It will be promulgated in the AIP and there will be parachute symbols on the chart. So it's a really good idea to look at NODAMs and look at the plate and even possibly contact the operators on the airport before you come in. They will give you information about the parachute activity and also information about the organisation that's operating the parachute activity. There'll be a phone number there. Prior to going into that area, you can ring the parachute operator to understand exactly what they're doing. And that way, when you get to the airport, you have an understanding of what's going on and you'll be much safer. So the normal process for a skydive pilot is after they take off to get whatever clearances they need to make the climb to whatever altitude they're going, then that pilot will um, make a two minute call prior to dropping the parachutists overhead the airfield. So at that two minute call we consider the, the parachute drop area to be live and so at that time it's a good idea to really avoid the overhead areas of the airport. And so if a pilot is entering an area and hears that two minute call, um, the best thing to do is just to stay away until the the parachute pilot then calls jumpers away and so if a pilot is entering an area and hears that two minute call um, the best thing to do is just to stay away until the the parachute pilot then calls jumpers away and descending. It normally takes about somewhere between five to six minutes from the time the parachute opens till the time they're on the ground. So giving yourself a five minute window is a good, is, gives yourself a good safety margin. It's really important to understand that the parachutes are not necessarily always right over top of the airfield. The parachute aircraft runs in towards the direction of the wind and if it's really windy upstairs, they might drop the parachutes actually, or the parachute is actually as far as a mile away from the airport. Um, that means that they can be opening between 5,000 feet and 3,000 feet anywhere a mile around the airport. So it's not just directly overhead the airport that there is a possible conflict. In fact, you have to keep your eyes open and be really aware of where those parachutes might be if you're coming into the circuit. If a pilot is unaware about where the parachutists might be at any particular time, then it's probably a good idea just to take a circuit away from the airfield for a moment, take some time, gather your spatial awareness and understand what's going on before you start to enter. The skydive plane descends really, really quickly, about 5,000 feet a minute. It's really important that when we're descending, we descend away from the circuit so that we're away from traffic. It's equally as important to join the circuit in a standard way. So once we've completed the descent at that high descent rate, we slow the aircraft down and we join the circuit in a normal way. It's really, really important that we don't come into the circuit in a way that compromises the other traffic already in the circuit. It's absolutely not okay to come screaming into the circuit from uh, the top. Communication is the key. You really have to, you really have to communicate. When you're coming in, it's really important to communicate before you get to the zone. Some areas are really busy and there's lots of traffic and so as an unfamiliar pilot 
coming into that zone, you really need to get an understanding of what's going on. You can always call the drop pilot and say that you give them your location and they will give you an indication of where the parachutes might be at that particular time. Sometimes it's even better to communicate in a plain language way when you're coming in. We much prefer to actually have communication than for somebody to be too fearful about saying the wrong thing. And so really good idea just to get on that radio, call up somebody and say, look, I'm coming in, I'm unfamiliar with the area, how can I enter safely? Normally when it comes to taxiing on the ground, the parachuting organisation will have a flag up in the parachute landing area, which indicates that the parachute landing area is live. So at that point in time, it's not a good idea to taxi anywhere near that parachute landing area. The um, drop zone will take the flag down after all the, all the uh, parachutists have landed, and so then it's safe to taxi through that area. I'm a great believer of common sense and communication. On a busy airfield like this, it's really important that the operators and the users and the participants at the airfield get together and talk to each other and understand what each other is doing. By doing that, what we do is we get, we get a better picture of how things are going to operate and we can solve problems before they arise in a formal way. But informally, it's great just to go over to the other base or the other operation and have a chat and just see what's going on and see how things are going for them. We do that all the time and it works really well for us. It's a council run aerodrome and so they are the airport operator and they as the airport operator require us to have meetings from time to time which they're involved in. So really what the council do for us is they provide support for those meetings, they provide somebody to take the minutes and they provide a, a structure. Then we as a group pass on information back through to that meeting which goes through to council so it, it's, it's a channel of information back to the airport operator for anything that needs to be done at the airport. <laughs>